Okay, so um, what I want to talk about today are is patterns of reaction affinity in rocks that have porphyroblasts. Um, I think as most of you know, reaction affinity is an important control on how the um, um, new minerals nucleate and uh, start to grow and when an ice grad is overstepped. And there have been a number of papers over the last decade that have tried to <clears throat> understand um, how variations in reaction affinity affects the kinds of things that you, you see in a metamorphic rock. Now just briefly, um, I want to um, <clears throat> run through a um, what the steps are when you um, grow a, a new mineral in a, in a metamorphic rock. Um, the first thing that has to happen is it has to nucleate. Um, nucleation rates proportional to the um, degree of overstepping that um, how far um, you've overstepped the, uh, the reaction. Um, it'll usually, once a nucleus is formed, it'll grow by um, consumption of some nearby material, but before very much uh, growth um, can take place, you've got to start to transport components um, from farther afield. Uh, you can model or estimate the um, distances over which things can um, partially equilibrate um, by using just the square root of the effective diffusion coefficient times times time. And then as long as you're maintaining local equilibrium, what will happen is metastable minerals farther away from the, the growing mineral will start to dissolve and um, provide the components that are being transported to your newly grown mineral. <clears throat> now, if you're um, looking at something like a, a garnet that is nucleating growing in a um, chlorite muscovite um, schist, um, the chlorite muscovite will be usually distributed pretty um, uniformly throughout your rock. And so what you're, um, <clears throat> when you nucleate and begin to grow a, um, a new garnet, uh, what will happen is the region around the garnet will be um, begin to be partially equilibrated um, and the regions farther away from the garnet will be um, some sort of have some sort of metastable um, reaction that's buffering them and the, the distance or the difference between the Gibbs free energy of the stable porphyroblast and the metastable matrix is what's called the reaction affinity. It's a measure of how far things are are overstepped. And so the way this would work would be you'd be growing your garnet here, your chlorite would be breaking down out here, um, and the constituents to be growing the garnet, and then also that have to be transported away from the garnet would be getting transported uh, across this, this region. Now, <clears throat> if you have a rock like this though, um, this is a starlight garnet schist um, from Range to the main area um, with porphyroblasts of uh, poikilitic starlight and then some garnet in it. Now, if we were to warm this up, um, the <coughs> mineral that would begin nucleating and growing would be sylvanite um, by this whole rock reaction down here. Um, sylvanite usually nucleates and begins to, to grow in biotites, which are um, distributed all throughout the throughout the rock, and so we don't have to worry about preferential nucleation sites or things like that. Um, however, um, if the, um, <coughs> the scales of equilibration are measured in, in centimeters, you, you can use your reaction affinity based on your whole rock, um, whole rock equilibrium. But <coughs> if they're measured in millimeters, you actually have a whole bunch of subdomains in the um, <coughs> in this thin section, um, some of which have matrix minerals with no starlight. In other words, it's in equilibrium or potentially in equilibrium with garnet plus the matrix. You have some that have the full assemblage, starlight, garnet um, plus the matrix minerals. Others over here, you don't have any garnet present, but you have starlight. Present. And then you have uh, some like this one over here um, that doesn't have any starlight or garnet. 
And so what that means is that um, as this rock is moving across the, um, overstepping the, the sylmanite isograd, um, you have, if the domains of equilibrium are small, you're gonna have a bunch of different bulk compositions that are gonna control the activity of al 2 sl 5 in your, in your rock. And if you <coughs> look at the way the Gibbs free energy of sylmanite uh, varies as a function of these different bulk compositions. You have four different um, <coughs> four different possibilities. Um, the one that is in red here, that's the delta G sylmanite um, for the matrix where the uh, reaction is buffed by um, the matrix assemblage, but not in equilibrium with starlight and garnet. This one right here is the um, <clears throat> situation where you have garnet plus matrix being the buffering assemblage, and then your whole rock assemblage is this dark line, and then the starlight without garnet is almost exactly exactly the same. Now, what that means is that your um, favored, your most favored area for nucleation and growth of your new sylmite is going to be in your matrix uh, <coughs> matrix environments um, that are not being buffered by starlight and garnet. What's going on over here is that the uh, starlight in particular is uh, strongly buffering the AL2SL5 present in, uh, in domains in equilibrium with starlight. If you look at the effect that that has on nucleation and growth and um, <coughs> or nucleation in these this sort of setting. Um, I've shown all four curves here. This is nuclei per um, percent per cubic centimeter. Basically if you're up in this range you're going to get one nucleus forming per um, centimeter cubed per 100 years. Down here it's going to be one nucleus forming per, per thousand years. Um, <laughs> These curves I obtained by um, using some um, information that was in uh, Kelly Carlson and Ketchum um, paper back in 2013. Uh, they were looking at garnet nucleation. Um, and so um, these um, curves are, are probably not exactly correct for sumonite, but what they do show is that the, that difference in reaction affinity, depending upon what assemblage is buffering your, your AL2SO5 is quite significant. And most of our nucleation should be taking place um, either in the matrix or in matrix close to, to garnets. <coughs> if you look at the um, <coughs> way that sylmanite uh, nucleates and grows in these kinds of rocks, uh, what happens is the starlight dissolves, and that's what can kind of pseudomorph by various combinations of micas. Usually it's a muscovite rich um, pseudomorph, but if it's close to a, uh, a sylmanite that has started to grow over, um, over the, um, the pseudomorph, um, it can be biotite rich. So the reason that happens is there is a muscovite consuming reaction that is around each one of these guys that um, supplies aluminum that is growing with sylmanite and creates potassium, produces potassium that runs over to the starlight and causes the starlight to dissolve and be replaced by, by micas. I apologize for this um, <coughs> photomicrograph. I haven't been able to get in my office for two months now, so I had to actually make this um, this slide by scanning a 35 millimeter slide that I had. Um, <clears throat> what I've shown here are just where the original starlights were that dissolved and then I put these little exploding white things on the, um, the centers of, of sylmanite segregations. And what you can see is that the uh, places where I'm presuming it nucleated are generally on the order of millimeters away from, from their starlights. There are also some smaller um, sylmanite segregations out here, 
I know from serial sectioning and um, tomography that these are probably um, little wisps of um, the edges of other sylmanites that are out of the planus section and have nucleated a few millimeters of, um, <coughs> back in the, in the section or uh, above the thin section. Now, what does that mean? Well, um, the, um, <coughs> this is a diagram showing um, the distance that things should be equilibrating as a function of temperature. Um, it's measured in centimeters. Um, your sylmanite in isograd is, is right here for this particular bulk composition at 583 Celsius and four kilobars. Um, I got these um, various diffusion parameters from this rock of Kelly's. The reason I chose this particular rock was it had the uh, matrix grain size that was pretty similar to um, the rock I was trying to model. Um, and it also had a similar heating, um, heating history to it. Now, what this means, <clears throat> if you look at the um, distribution, oops. <clears throat> if you look at the distribution of where these um, sylmite segregations are first nucleating and growing, we're talking about millimeters away um, from the, um, the starlights and millimeters away from each other. And so what we're talking about is some sort of a, um, <clears throat> environment in which uh, nucleation is taking place over uh, a few tens of thousands uh, of years. If you look at the effect uh, <clears throat> that would have on the nucleation, what we're talking about uh, are nuclei um, that are mostly forming down in this region. Um, and so what this means is that uh, your nucleation is, is taking place over um, a few thousand years, and you're not really overstepping the um, the original reaction by um, more than a few tens of tens of degrees before you start to have um, sylmite nuclei forming in the rock, and then um, and then starting to grow at the expense of starlight. So, what does this mean? Um, well, <clears throat> first of all, I think I've shown or tried to show you that um, when you have porphyroblasts, the rocks are not homogeneous, they're heterogeneous, and you can have um, local equilibrium established by different metastable reactions um, that can control the nucleation and early growth of the minerals. I think if you look at metamorphic rocks, you can use the textures you see in them to evaluate these types of things. Um, and ultimately, when we get um, a better handle on some of these parameters, we should be able to start using crystal size and distribution patterns um, to extract um, high resolution pressure temperature time paths. Then finally, um, as these domains of equilibrium begin to spread out or progressively enlarge, what happens is the, um, <clears throat> even though the early growth rate is controlled by, and nucleation is controlled by um, locally buffered reactions, uh, eventually, the domains of equilibrium will get big enough so that the rock will be well equilibrated. Okay. Thank you very much.